Hello, this is Maria from Math Mammoth and this is Mathy, my mascot. In this lesson we are gonna study about polygons and review a few things. Okay, so let's read what a polygon is. It's written there. A polygon is a flat two-dimensional figure that consists of line segments and is closed. So let's draw here some examples and non-examples. For example, is this one a polygon? It consists of line segments, it's two-dimensional figure, but it's not closed, so it's not a polygon. But if I close it, you know, if it was like this, a triangle, yes, then it's a polygon. How about this one? Okay, I intend it to be a polygon, a rectangle, so yes. And then, what if I say that it's a cube? Matthew knows, it's not a polygon if it's a cube, if it's a three-dimensional figure, okay? Or if it's a ball, or if it's a cone, or a box. Those are three-dimensional figures, not polygons. How about... Why is this not a polygon? Because it's not consisting of line segments. Line segments are straight lines like these, you know? This has rounded curves, so it's not a polygon. How about this one? Yes, it's a polygon. Imagine that these are all straight line segments. It's a polygon. And this one? Again, imagine that my drawing was perfect. Yes, it is a polygon. A polygon can cross itself. Okay, it's flat, two-dimensional. It consists of line segments and is closed, so all is good here. Oh, yes, Matt is reminding me. Matt is self-portrait. Is this one a polygon? It has lots of line segments there, see? But is it a polygon? No, it's not because it has curved lines here, right? Over there, over there. And here is not the line segment, the eye. So, no, sorry, Matty, not the polygon. Now let's look at names of polygons. Okay, you know most of these already. And uh, I'm going to write the names here. If it has three vertices, that means three corners, what is it called? A triangle, yes. And it comes from the Greek word three, meaning three. Okay, and then we have the angle. It actually has three angles too. A triangle has three sides and three angles. And then if it has four vertices for example four corners one two three four what is it called these are called quadrilaterals remember and this one comes from latin words not greek quadri meaning four and then lateral comes from the word meaning side and then what if it has five vertices or five corners then it's called pentagon and the Greek word pente means five. Next one, if we have six corners, six vertices, what Greek word means six? It ends in X, yes. Hex, can you tell? Hexagon, yes. And then next one, hepta. Hepta means seven in Greek, heptagon. And lastly, what word in Greek means eight? Well, do you know of an animal that has eight legs, lives in the sea? Octopus? Octa. And so, octagon is then an eight-sided polygon. Now, let's look at regular polygons. So here we have a bunch of them. And what is special about regular polygons? Why are they called regular? It's because in regular polygons, each side is the same length and each angle has the same measure. In other words, the angles are congruent and the sides are congruent also. Now, this one here, what do you call it? You count the vertices. Five, so it is called pentagon, but this one is a regular pentagon. Next one has six vertices. And notice how each side is the same length, each angle is the same measure. A regular hexagon, yes. And this one? 
Now we have eight vertices, so it's called a regular octagon. And then over here in the second row, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have a regular heptagon. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this one is a nonagon, a regular nonagon. And this last one has 10 vertices, so it's a decagon, regular decagon. Here our task is to measure the angle, one angle, of this regular heptagon. So the heptagon has seven vertices and seven angles and seven sides. Okay, everything seven. And we're going to measure one of the angles. And I have my protractor here. So this will be a review at the same time as to how to measure angles. Okay, the basic idea is that I need to move this protractor so that its middle point here is at the vertex of the angle I want to measure. And I'm going to measure this angle here. So I'll move it like that. Okay. And then one of the sides here has to line up with one of the protractor's lines that goes through zero. And this one does now. So all is well. And now we are ready to read the angle. And if you remember those two sets of numbers for the angles, one set starting here at zero, going all the way to 180. The other set starts here from zero to 180 degrees. And so we need to determine which scale we're gonna read it from. We're gonna look at this other side of the angle. If I look at these numbers, it is just a little bit past 50 degrees, a little bit bigger than 50 degrees. And then if I look at this other set of numbers, it's just before 130 degrees, between 120 and 130. But which one do I read? Okay, I can look at this angle, and if you remember about acute and obtuse angles, this angle here is more than 90 degrees. It's an obtuse angle, so therefore it must be between 120 and 130 degrees. All right? And I would say 129 degrees. Here I have a regular nonagon or a polygon with nine vertices. If we measure one of its angles with the protractor, there's one difference. I have to turn the protractor and then align it, its midpoint here at one of the vertices. Okay, and now it's already ready because this side is lined up with the zero line here. It's at the vertex and now we can read the numbers. This angle once again is an obtuse angle, more than 90 degrees. So we will read these numbers, not the 40, but 140 degrees. Okay, I hope this was helpful.